Hi folks, it's good to be with you, love to everybody out there, uh, it's Royal Blood Ministries and this is my brother, colleague, uh, brother Mike, and uh, before we start I'd like to read the passage that Mike brought up in the other video, which is Galatians chapter 1, and uh, we're going to talk about in this, this uh, video Muslim Apologist uh, Arguments. So, in Galatians chapter 1, it says, Paul, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen. So what I want to do in this video, if it's all right with Mike, and if he wants to talk about things, right, yes, right. We'll, we'll talk about other topics, but... I'd like to just in this video go through quickly some of the Muslim apologies stuff uh, at Hyde Park, their arguments they make, and I'd like Mike to unpack some of their arguments and, and how we answer them as Christians. And then we're just going to look at two topics, uh, the cross and uh, the divinity of Christ. And then I'll, I'd like to share a, a few things with Mike concerning some of the research that I've done recently and ask his opinion on that so those are the th some of the things we might stop the video at each point and restart it uh, so we can get it in segments so the first segment is Muslim apologies so I'll start with Hamza what do you think of Hamza's arguments uh, what Hamza the, the older Hamza with the one with the white hat I think Ham Hamza's arguments display a lack of understanding of biblical doctrine and Christian beliefs. Mm. He's basically what he's doing. He's taking random passages from the Bible and trying to build an argument on each of the passages, rather than understanding the context of the passages and reading the, all of the context. Mm. Um, what Hamza doesn't realise in the Bible is that every part of Scripture has a brother or, or a sister counterpart to it. So you can read something in the New Testament, and there'll be something in the Old Testament that kind of agrees with it. So it's got a unity to it. Mm. It's got a discourse to it. Um, the Muslim apologists don't tend to look at the Bible in an honest and fair way. Mm. They look at a passage and say, oh, you believe this, or this this is disproving you. Mm. Mm. But it, they don't look at the whole body of Scripture. They just mm. look at little bits of it, and they twist the context. So when we do that with the Quran, and we mm. show them passages, they say, you need to get the context. And we're saying the same thing to you. So there's a lack of understanding on his part, and his ignorance is... He's shown on camera every week, and he just make mm. he just embarrasses himself, and he's just a disgrace really to Islam and and to fair fairness mm. of looking at things. Yeah, I, I, I've got four four or five points on Hamza. Yeah. Uh, is you probably remember in some of the debates one one of the debates he had. Yeah. He goes on about Ezekiel. Oh, Ezekiel, yeah. You know, and uh, he quotes a passage from Ezekiel about uh, the one about the sin. You know, if you people's sins will not be put upon another person. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know. The, so he'll yeah. quote, quote from Ezekiel, but he hasn't got... I, I'm sure if I met him, he has not got a clue about the whole book of Ezekiel. Mm, I agree. You I know, agree. that's one example. I mean, the book of Ezekiel is a big book, and uh, so he, he wouldn't know the full context yeah. of the full book. Yeah. Uh, another example is uh, the last ending. You know the ending in, in Matthew twenty eight. Oh yeah, the great commission. Where it says yeah. the great commission. I, I've yeah. seen him on camera where he says to a Christian, "Oh, that that's not in your most ancient text." Mm. You know. I've heard that. Uh, yeah. And he, and he said, uh, you know, Eusebius accepts that because he didn't quote the last ending. Yeah. You know. And uh, well, I checked it, and Eusebius actually quoted um, quoted uh, a number, quite a number of times, the last ending, uh, 
of, of Matthew, uh, the Great Commission. So he was incorrect historically, and he's also incorrect on manuscripts. Ancient, most of the ancient manuscripts of Matthew, and the most oldest, have the Great Commission in. Yeah. So he's been caught not knowing his facts. Yeah. But he's not going to get taken to task, because he won't debate people like us. He'll just debate people who don't really know these things, who won't go and research it and, and point it out to him. Yeah. Uh, another one he debated, uh, it was an atrocious debate, when he debated that young girl. Do you remember that young girl? Oh, and, yeah. And it, do, was yeah. On, it was on the cross and the resurrection. Yeah. Is that the one where she said, show me the crown where it says God loves unbelievers and he walked away? Was it that, that, that was girl? a different one, but we'll come on to that because yeah. that's a brilliant one. You could... Was that the same girl though? No, I, I think it was a different one. Right. But he debated a girl on the cross and the resurrection. Yeah. And it was blatantly obvious that he, he had not got a clue about the historical data outside the Bible yeah. concerning that. I've seen him uh, say that the, the Gospel of Barnabas is a better book to, to know about Jesus <laughs> than, than, than the four Gospels. I mean, I mean, do you want to say anything about that? But, yeah, um, what I know about the Gospel of Barnabas is that he's really clutching at straws on that one because he, uh, most, a lot of Muslim scholars today accept that the Gospel of Barnabas is a fake and a forgery. You only have to look at the bound, um, what it's bound in. It's bound in leather, leather bounding. Uh, at the time of Jesus Christ, if it was from the time of Jesus, as they claim, um, it wouldn't be bound in leather. Wow, that's brilliant. In its original form, it's in leather, so the leather wasn't invented then, um, in the way that... It, it also talks about 16th century, things that happened in the 16th century, such as wine barrel, uh, beer barrels made out of wow, wood. Wow, that's brilliant. That, that never happened in the first century. They never had that kind of thing going on. So it's talking about 16th century things, so it couldn't have come from the first century. Yeah, I think the leather thing... Uh, like the, the type of binding. That's it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think, like, before, even, like, centuries before, like, Jesus, there might have been... Because uh, we found manuscripts with... Uh, in, in kind of... I wouldn't say leather, but light leather. Sort I of. think it was the material wasn't around. Wasn't yeah, a certain type of material, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Hamza, really. We've done Hamza. And, and we're not... We've not had hominin. We've stuck to arguments. Brother here has provided some helpful uh, pointers there. Um, oh, he, he goes on about uh, Matthew. Matthew. Uh, he, yeah, he's, he's supposedly written a book on Matthew, <laughs> which is, I can guarantee if we got the book, I guarantee if we got the book, if you want to give us a copy, Hamza, of your book, we'll give you a review, <laughs> but I guarantee a lot of it will be a rehash yeah. of Bart Ehrman yeah. and a few other liberal scholars. I've noticed as well that they always quote Bart Ehrman as if he's some kind of authority on Christian doctrine. Bart Ehrman is just somebody who is just criticising the Bible and having an opinion on it. He's not, he's not someone that you would take seriously. I mean, there's, there's thousands, of, there's hundreds of scholars out there that would totally destroy what Bart Ehrman has to say about mm. Christianity. So I quoted some scholars to Paul Williams and he didn't seem to want to know. There's loads of scholars out there in New Testament criticism mm, that mm. totally, uh, you know, it'll totally destroy an argument you're going to use with Bart Ehrman. So, yeah. sorry. Go no, on. go on, go on, go on. Um, so, if Bart Ehrman said things about the Quran that weren't true, would you accept it? No, you wouldn't. Mm, You'd mm. reject it. Yeah, you call him an Orientalist. <laughs> uh, what happened with when Hamza uh, walked away concerning love? He was asked about love. He was, yeah. In the Quran, in the Bible, it says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, have eternal life. Now, in the Bible, it says God is love. The essence of God is love because he wants people to know him. He wants to show people his salvation. But in the Quran, it says Allah does not love the unbelievers. He only seems to love the believers, which is obviously Muslims. So that shows not an inclusive God, but a, a God that he shows favoritism. And the Bible says that God does not show favoritism, but the God of Islam seems to show favoritism. Mm, it's and a God who's got a multi multiple personality. There's no passage in the Quran that says God loves unbelievers, and I'd love any Muslim out there to show me it. 
Mm. Mm. I would I would give him a hundred pounds if you can show me that that one statement that says Allah loves unbelievers. That one empirical sir, if you can just show me that, I'd love you to show me that. And he and he ran away, didn't he? He walked away because he knew there wasn't an answer. He, <laughs> he knew it. He did. He he, he did the he, he did the chicken run. He did. He did the chicken run. Yeah. Um, so next one, Paul Williams. Paul Williams. You know quite a bit about his arguments. I have met this man. This man is one of the most dishonest, angriest, uh, disingenuous persons that I've ever met at Hyde Park. He attacks Christianity with such zeal that when you bring attacks on Islam, he doesn't want to talk about it or he brushes it aside as if it's not, not important that you bring in these claims about Islam. Um, Paul Williams is a re really, really bad... I would, even, I would call him a hack. hack. I would even give him the title scholar. He's just somebody who mm. just picks verses here and there and then he makes an argument out of it. And he, he hasn't... I'll, I'll tell you how dishonest he is. I'll give you an example. I met him last January for the very first time and he was talking about babies being killed in the Bible. Now he talks about the Amicalites in the Bible, babies being killed, that kind of thing. Mm. And the Muslims would go, oh look, your God's a baby killer, blah, 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 blah. If you look at the 99 names of Allah, it says that God is the giver of life and the taker of life. So that means God has the right to take life and to give mm. life in whatever form he sees fit. Okay. Now Paul Williams said to me, oh, um, oh, that's terrible that. It says that God kills babies. So I said, you need to go on sermonaudio.net, listen to the explanation, look at the context. Mm. And it, it said, oh, well, how long is that on for? I said, about an hour or so, you can listen to the commentary. Oh, no, I don't have time for that. He said he hasn't got time to listen to the explanation, mm. but he's got time to walk around Hyde Park all day attacking that. That yeah. shows that he's not interested in the answer. He wow, just wants to wow, attack it. Wow, wow, that's a brilliant point. That. So that just shows the man, his character, that he's not interested in, apolo in hearing explanations. Mm. He, he's a snake, basically. The, um, I, I've, I've been in, I've studied academic theology for like, at least 20 years now so when he starts one of his fortes is he likes to quote uh, these academic the theologians and um, he, there's a scholar whose name I can't just remember at the moment I think it's uh, Dr. Martin I think it is um, he is a scholar at Yale and uh, Paul Williams likes to quote him uh, and also, um, there's a scholar, uh, I think it's Dr. Kirk, uh, on um, on uh, the deity, uh, and, uh, like critiquing the deity. So he, he, he likes to quote these scholars, but Dr. Martin of Yale is a postmodernist, and he doesn't believe there's one correct interpretation of a text. So Paul Williams is quoting this scholar, thinks great highly of this scholar, but uh, but but doesn't actually, you know, he, he's only cherry picking the bits that yeah. he wants. He's not actually following the full Dr. Martin of Yale University. There's a disingenuous mm -hmm. disingenuousness there, and the the two scholars that he, he kind of likes are gay, and <laughs> you know we all know why Paul Williams would like these scholars. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but um, in other words, it, it only fits Paul Williams' biasness. Yeah. You know, they suit him, they're gay, he feels comfortable with that, and, uh, or pro-gay, uh, one's gay and one's pro-gay, and um, the other one is that the, two, the intellectual tools that these scholars use, Paul Williams doesn't use those tools, he just takes a little bit of the cherry-picking just so we can attack Christianity, and as my brother said, um, you you put him to sources, and he doesn't want to know. Yeah. So, but in other words, totally biased. Yeah. He's not really looking at it objectively, but he likes to get on the camera and come across as really scholarly, doesn't he? Yeah. We we challenged him as well at Hyde Park. We we actually challenged him, and guess what? He shrunk back. See, he, he was walking around Hyde Park like a proud strutting line, thinking that. Yeah. He, he owned all everyone there that he had all that he could take on Christianity but when people come down who know the stuff guess what he backs away because he knows he'll lose and it just shows 
how dishonest this man is, how, yeah, how much yeah. of a snake he is. Yeah, and we don't want to do the ad hominem. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but that's how we found it. That's how we found Paul. He, he, he's not... And he goes around, he, I've seen him going around to fellow Christians saying about me, he's horrible, he's horrible, he's got a horrible attitude. Mm. And I, 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 we we asked him, would he debate me? We asked him in a nice way. Yeah. And he wasn't, oh, we just wanted to get down to the scholarship, didn't we? Yeah. You know. So, Mohammed Hijab, what do you think of Mohammed Hijab? Um, Mohammed Hijab and, and Ali Dawa, the, uh, both together. I've not spoke much to Mohammed Hijab. Once I spoke to him. Um, what I can see, he seems like a genuine kind of guy. He wants to talk to mm. talk. He seems a reasonable kind of individual. Yeah. He's obviously yeah. got bias there because he's Muslim, and obviously I'm Christian. I'll have bias in my position, but. But whenever you bring Muslims to task on things, it seems you never get straight conversation or answer. It's always, let's talk about the Bible. What about what the Bible says? Rather mm. than just dealing with what the Quran says. Because you guys believe that the Quran is the mother of all books. Mm. So if it is the mother of all books, then you should be able to defend it without attacking our book. Yeah. That's my understanding. I, can, I could defend Christianity without having to go to the Quran. The Quran... I don't need to expose the Quran in that way, but if, if you want me to, I can do, you know, it's not a problem. Now, there's one passage in the Bible I'd just like to read out, and this is probably the reason why a lot of Muslims don't understand Christianity or, or the Trinity or any kind of understanding of our scripture. The Bible says here, The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, mm. nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. It also says here, but who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now the Christian faith says that the, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling mm -hmm. in us, so we can discern the spiritual things of God. If you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then the Christian faith and its doctrines and the word, they're just words to you and you'll consider them foolishness. Mm. The Bible says that the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. Mm. And every time we talk about the cross, we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about our beliefs, you laugh, you mock, you jeer. And the reason you do so is not because you know, you think it, that we're a joke and that we're in the wrong, it's because you do not have the spirit of the living God in you. You have the spirit of Antichrist in you because you're following a false doctrine and a false book. Eventually, if you continue to believe in that, you'll die in your sin and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that all liars will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mockers, jeerers, mm. perjurers, murderers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you can mock and jeer, but there's a wrath of God coming on all ungodliness. So I'd be very afraid. Mm. The Bible says that the, um, the beginning of wisdom is the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. So I urge you to read the Bible and to understand spiritual things are not... Mm. cannot be understood by the natural man which you guys are Jay. Amen, Amen just get you in the camera on that uh, Mohammed Hijab I think that uh, he comes across as sincere very often he yeah. it comes across as very amiable mm. to talk to uh, I think he's one of the better ones who conducts himself in a, generally in a better way Yeah. Um, he seems to be a good debater in it, being able to debate people, mm. uh, but I still think he's a bit of a prima donna. Mm. Um, he he won't go up against like Bob the Builder. Yeah. He won't go up against us. Um, I've not seen him debate uh, like Lizzie or Hatum or Godwin or Daniel. So he's just a bit of a poster boy, uh, prima donna really, I think he, he, he's he got some kind of reputation there but he's got it not by working hard debating the more difficult debaters, Yeah. you know, so he's, he's he, and, and I'll give you an example, I, I talked to a, a young Muslim guy uh, and he went and got Mohammed Hijab Yeah. because he couldn't answer, yeah. Mohammed Hijab come, says oh I'll talk to you, 
but then he walked off. He said, I'll talk to you later, and then we saw him later on. Yeah. But obviously, he's afraid to get into proper debate. Yeah. Because uh, he knows that he's comfortable in where he's at, but he don't want difficult questions to ask. That's it, yeah. Uh, Ali Dawa? Ali Dawa, he, seem, he seems like um, a nice guy. He seems like a guy that's... To me, I feel he's got a good heart. He's gen he seems like a genuine human being with a good heart. Mm. And he he seems like a generally nice person. I wouldn't say he's like um, he's a, he's got a, he's there for nasty intent. I think he's just there to to propagate what he believes in. Yeah, and I think yeah. he's he's not as nasty towards. Um, the Christian faith, as some of the Muslims are down there, who can be quite hostile. I think he's not that hostile, but, but I've not really debated Ali Dawa or spoke to him that much. I've always kind of seen him and let on to him. That's about it. So I can't say too much about him. Well, I, I, when you think about it, when you, when you actually sit down and think about it, he's, he's not really done a lot of proper debates, has he? When not you think really, about it. no. I mean, he, he stood up and he had a bit of a debate with Jay Smith. Yeah. Um, I think that he's, he's kind of like a, a youth evangelist for Islam. Yeah. Stroke troll in terms of wanting to gain attention um, for trying to win over young people, Muslim young people. Yeah. So he, he seems to be high profile on the internet and gets a lot of hits. And Tommy Robinson. Because he's dead cool. Yeah, yeah. And because he's got that coolness, uh, he gets a lot of attention with young people. Um, but and it, I think he's quite tricky. Mm. He's a bit of a fox in that, he, you know. Uh, yeah, you've got to watch him. You've got to watch him. Yeah. But I think that in terms of like scholarship and, and scholarly debate, he's not even in the game, is he? No, and yeah. I would say that about most of the Muslims down there. The scholarly <laughs> side of things are just, are just terrible. <laughs> but he's not in the game. No, he's scholarly, not in the game. is it? No. But he 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 like throw a few tricks out. Like he'll throw a few quotes against the Bible and say, or I've seen him like quote a passage in Samuel where it says, and God did this, and then Satan did this, and you say, well, who is it, God or Satan? Then yeah. And you're thinking, well. Obviously, you don't understand the book of Samuel, you yeah, don't understand what you're talking about, yeah. but he's just trying to score cheap shots, really. So, I don't rate him in any way as yeah. a debater. He seems a, a nice guy, a little bit tricky, because he's, he's more interested in promoting his Islam yeah. and reaching young people and getting good good videos and good hits on his YouTube channel. But as a ser someone who you can have a serious, decent conversation with, in the scholarly way, I think he's yet to prove himself in yeah. that area, really. Uh, yeah. The best that he did is when he, he, he had a debate with Jay Smith, mm. uh, and he was reading from a paper, uh, which there's nothing wrong in that, but um, he didn't seem to... Uh, it's okay reading from a paper if you understand the paper. Yeah. And I feel like... When he was debating Jay Smith, he didn't really understand what he was debating. Yeah. He was just like parroting something that he hadn't digested. And you can tell that because how many videos have you seen him for for one hour, two hours, where he's had a, a solid debate using his own brain where you think, hmm, that guy knows a lot. Yeah. How many debates have you seen of that? I've done that. You haven't mm -hmm. seen that at the end of So. Okay. Who's that other guy, the, the one who starts going at Christmas, the one who's got a beard on? You know what I mean? Mohammed. The one who filmed me that time for Guidance Avenue. Well, I think Mohammed and Guidance Avenue. You said, didn't you, a long time ago, watch out for him, and we're starting to see a bit of extremism starting to come up through him. Which yeah. we've seen a lot of radical Muslims, we've seen it in Andrew and Chowdhury and others. That is the, I just want to say, Muslims, that is the spirit of Antichrist that's in you, that's working in you. Yeah. It's not yeah. a fruitful thing, it's, it's not good to hate something like Christmas so much, even if it is pagan, it doesn't yeah, require it, that much hatred to come from a person about it. Yeah, I think I think we have to be careful in what we say, but one does feel sometimes some of the um, lower end apologies, you get a sneaky feeling that there's more to it than just apologetics, that, yeah. that 
we've got to be very careful what we say, but we, you f I feel a little bit uncomfortable because this they, they, they're pretending to be apologist, mm -hmm. but you feel that there's a bit of extremism there. Yeah. Uh, and it came out, didn't it, at Christmas when he yeah. stood up, and, and what he said was absolutely shocking. I mean, whether it was right or whatever, uh, to say what he said, the way he said it, and you're not supposed to use sound equipment there, uh, it was atrocious really because he, he, he was showing uh, real extremism coming out. Yeah. And uh, there's one or two apologies down there that you feel, uh, the lower end ones, that there's more to it than meets the eye. In there. But, yeah. but we can't say anything, we can't prove anything, and we're not going to go and dig on these people. But I will say one thing with regards to Christmas. Um, yeah, you may you may think it's a pagan festival, and you're most probably right because I did what I did watch a video on about an exaintist who tells you about the roots of Christmas. But the thing is, if you look at if you want to talk about paganism and things like that, you only need to look at the Hajj festival. You only need to look at the Hajj, and yeah, it's a good the point. the pilgrimage to Mecca is where the Muslims go and they stand in front of the 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 carved stone and they encircle it seven times. Mm. The Bible says that you must not set a sacred stone up in the land, it's an abomination to the Lord. And I've actually seen Muslims kissing the stone. Now I know you say that the stone's just a point of worship and you don't kiss it, but that doesn't stop other people from doing it, and that to me is idolatry. <coughs> You're now mm. giving some kind of credit to this stone which doesn't do anything, it's just a stone. Yeah. And the Bible says yeah. they don't speak, they're just idols. So if you want to talk about paganism, you, you, you need to look closer to home as well. And look at the pagan roots of your own faith before you start hating on other people's mm. paganism. Uh, uh, that black stone, yeah, right. There was a god called the Black Stone God. Correct. Yes, there was. <laughs> so yeah, Horus and, or something. And so they're worshiping uh, the Black Stone God because yeah. that's what that that stone represented. There were religion, different religions down there, and not only that, there were many of these meteor stones that come down. And many carvers set up all around Saudi uh, Arabia at the time, and many of these stones, and they were worshipped as gods. So all, like as my brother said, it's, this is just paganism. So it's no good throwing stones at uh, Christmas and saying it's pagan, when your own religion was rooted and and, and grounded in paganism. But I, I just want to get onto this yeah, issue yeah, of extremism a minute. Yeah. Because one or two accusations, some idiot keeps posting verses about me being a Tommy Robinson and, and Britain First supporter. I, I just want to nail this, you know, is I believe, personally, that this is not Mike's particular opinion, this is my own opinion, that Islam uh, is a theocracy and as a theocracy it seeks to take over land. That's the first point. Secondly, Islam has a doctrine of war. And, I, and so therefore I believe it's right to oppose Islam politically. Uh, so I, But I don't agree with some of the uh, disrespectful ways that Tommy and uh, Britain First conduct themselves, like going into mosques and things like that. Yeah. But I do agree that there's nothing wrong in opposing Islam politically. And if they're opposing Islam politically, there's nothing wrong in that. But being disrespectful... I don't agree with that. And second, thirdly, some of the right wingers uh, seem to be looking for civil war in the future, and I don't agree with that. As a Christian, I believe that our job as Christians is to preach the gospel yeah. and to argue against Islam in a scholarly way. So I'm not a Tommy Robinson supporter in that sense, nor a Britain First. I am a preacher of the gospel who believes that we should oppose Islam politically. Yeah. And that's not the right. Not that's not being right wing. The Bible, um, in the book, I think it's the book of Galatians, says that the works of the flesh are evidence. One of the works of the flesh is dissensions and factions. And if you look at the word dissension and factions, it's talking about being, um, it means having animosity between people. Now, when we look at the extreme side of Islam, they have no respect for the law. They want to establish their own law. They have no respect for the man-made law. Mm. And you're actually opposing what God has appointed. Because the Bible says that all what's been appointed is of God. So basically what you're doing, you're committing the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft, the Bible says. So you're actually committing witchcraft and rebellion and rebellion comes from the devil. Okay? Yeah. 
So if you're committing, that's a sin, you're actually doing the work of the flesh, Muslims. Okay. So, oh, you don't want to read that? Uh, I want to read this as well. Um, if you want to talk about paganism, the Bible actually forbids paganism. Uh, Leviticus 26 says, You shall not make idols for yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred stone shall you rear up for yourselves, mm. nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land or bow down to it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and revere my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Mm. Now God says I am, a, the, the Bible says that God is a jealous God and he will not yield his glory to another. As my brother rightly said, the God that you worship is a God of war, a God of fortresses. It's a God of, uh, the God of the Bible is not that God at all. The God that you, you're actually bowing down to is not the God or who designed you or made you or created you. Mm. Unfortunately, it's an idol, just like the stone that you worship in the desert. Amen. Amen. So, like, so we've knit, we've, the, we, we sense a little bit of extremism there, undercurrent within yeah. Islam. And the other thing as well, uh, I do think that the issue with Sarah, uh, as discredits a lot of the apologetics down there of Islam. Sarah was a black person who critiqued Islam. He got a death threat. He made a video about it. He showed that the police had told him that he was getting a death threat. I don't think the death threat came from Martians. I don't think the death threat came from the Christians or the Buddhists or the Hindus. It came from somewhere. It so happens that Sarah was criticising Islam. And I don't see any Muslim apologist defending Sarah's right to free speech. So I think that discredits a lot of what's going down there. Showing that I do think that Muslim apologists in High Park need to be called out for that they because do. Sarah should be down there debating, but he doesn't go down there as much because he's in fear of his life, and I don't agree with that. So, Muslim apologists, you've got some serious thinking to do. It's not good coming there and pretending you're all about free speech and you debate when one of the major uh, persons who criticized Islam and, w and was pretty good at it, yeah, he was pretty good at it, he was one of the, the best debate, he wasn't a Christian. But he was one of the best debaters down there, and he and he, he wiped the floor with the Muslims people, didn't he? Like apologies. Yeah. yeah. But he got a death threat. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He got a death threat, and now he doesn't go down there much. And pressure also was put upon Titan TV. Somebody, um, the guy I debated uh, on the Trinity, mm. uh, told him and said, you know, you shouldn't be uh, attacking Islam. Yeah. So Titan TV switched from attacking Islam. To doing other stuff as well, but Titan TV has free speech, and if he wants to critique Islam, he has a right to do so. Yeah. So they put pressure on Sarah, mm. but that was serious stuff. Yeah. Who did it? Whatever. But it worked the Hindus. It worked the Buddhists. No. It worked the Jews. It worked the atheists. It worked the agnostics. It worked the Christians. So who was it? It's the Muslims. Yeah. Because so Islam cannot stand handle criticism, and the only way you deal with it is by. Violence. So, so he hasn't been going down there because of that death threat. And the Muslim apologists down there have not sorted it out. They've not said, we stand with Sarah. He has the right to free speech. And then they're going round. Uh, Ali Dawa was going round follow, uh, stalking uh, Tommy Robinson and stuff like that. Yeah, you, you've got to get your own house in order before you start getting other people's house in order. You know, that just needs to be said, I think, yeah, about Sarah, you know. Definitely. I just, want to, I just want to come to the Bible on this as well. I feel God is speaking through this as well. Um, in the time of Jesus, Jesus had to deal with hypocrites, such as the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they were more concerned with the commandments of men and the traditions than actually following the one true God. Now, it mm. says here, Jesus has a word for that, for what you guys do, and that's called hypocrisy. Okay? Um... It says here, you draw, t you draw near me with your mouth, mm. and you honour me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So you put more emphasis on the teachings of your Iman or, or, the, or, your, or your tradition than you do on the one true God. Mm. Now this thing about issuing mm. death threats to Sarah is totally unbiblical, and you're actually committing an act of the flesh. Mm. And it's what's in your evil heart. Jesus says, for out of the heart, this is in Matthew 15, verse 19, mm. um, it's it's what comes out of the heart that defiles a man. And this is what's in the heart of the human heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, 
false witness, which is lying by the way, and Islam um, in some sects of Islam says it's okay to lie, blasphemy, these are the things which defile a man, okay? So this is what defiles you Muslims, it's what's in your heart. Yeah, so you've got to get your house in order and you've got to sort that issue out, issue out with Sarah, you know? He should be welcomed at High Park and he, and he should be allowed to debate and he should not have any fear of coming down there. And I'm, I, I don't agree with Sarah's views. Uh, he's not a Christian. He's he's uh, he's a Kemet or what or pro mm. black whatever in it. I don't ancestral worship. Ancestral, ancestral worship. We don't agree. I don't agree with it. But I I know Mike and I, we would defend his right to free speech down yeah. there, and yeah. we would welcome him to come down there and have his free speech. Uh, we as Christians say, so come down, do your debating. We're okay about it, and you as Muslims mm. should absolutely condemn. Any threats on Sarah, we condemn it. We say it's out of order. You should condemn it, and you should welcome him because it's come from your end, and you should yeah. encourage him. And you haven't. So all the all the stuff that you're doing at the moment is just hypocrisy. Yeah. Another issue about hypocrisy: you offer the the Muslim world uh, when Saudi Rush Salman Rushdie wrote uh, the what, Satanic what, verses. Good point, like, yeah death threat was put upon his head, right? Death threat was put upon his head and a fatwa is still on his head today. Yeah. Now I've been researching Ibn Ishaq, the earliest biography of the Prophet Muhammad, and in that early source, the satanic verses are there. So you are absolutely, completely out of order, mm. and it's an absolute disgrace that in your sources are these satanic verses, and then you put a a death threat, a fatwa, on Southern Russia. You've got to sort your house out. Sort your house out. Do we, 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 We're here as honest people just wanting honest scholarship and debate. That's all we want. So you've got to get all this stuff sorted and get in the real world and deal with proper arguments. Shamsi, Shamsi mm -hmm. and Mansour. Shamsi is one of the worst debaters I've ever had to encounter at Hyde Park. Well, the reason I say that is because whenever you're talking to him, he continually interrupts you. <coughs> when he asks you a question, I give him the Christian position, and then he says, no, 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 no. Well, I can't give you a Muslim <laughs> position, I can only give you a Christian position. And basically what he's saying is what I believe, you reject anyway, but you don't give me the, 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 the chance to even explain it, and you don't even take it on board or digest what I'm saying. So Shamsi, you need to listen more, bro, because you really don't know what you're talking about. You really don't. Do, do you see that? I watched a documentary. It was hilarious. There was this guy. Yeah. And he has the Duddy Kruger effect. Where he, and, and he and he was saying he was making videos and saying he was a great, he was a great world champion boxer. Oh yeah, yeah. But he couldn't box for his life. Yeah. Right. So he turned up. <laughs> it's turn up at these uh, <laughs> boxing uh, training places yeah. where you've got like Sugar Ray Leonard or some great boxer. Yeah. He turn up and say, "Come on, I'll fight you." And he gets in the ring and he and he and he like go for, and then he gets battered all over the place. <laughs> and that reminds me of Shamsi. Yeah. He's like, "I am the world's greatest debater." Yeah. But it's like, what, what? It, you you can't debate somebody who's who who. who he, 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 he does this, doesn't he? He goes like this, he goes, uh, he, right, I'm Shamsi, right? Uh, did God die? No. Right. I win, I'm off, and yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, does yeah. that, doesn't he? Yeah. You can't have a, you can't have a like, rational discussion with a guy. Yeah, so it, it's just a waste of space. Anyhow, um, Mansour. Mansour is very aggressive. He interrupts you and... He just totally, he seems like a very angry man. He seems like whatever argument you bring, whatever angle you come at, he tries to make you think that you're in the wrong, that you don't have a right to even bring that to the table, and that he seems to think he knows all the answers and that he can debunk every argument. I think he's got a lot of arrogance, he's got a lot of pride in him, and he needs to humble himself when it comes to debate mm. and listen carefully to what people are saying. 
and if someone brings a criticism is not to get so uptight and angry about it but to deal with it in an intellectual debatable way because it's not necessarily what you what you say that puts people off debating you so it's it's what you say sorry it's not what you say it's how you say it mm -hmm. and how you come across in your mannerism and half the time a lot of Christians don't want to debate people who are aggressive when you're debating people, you don't be mega aggressive and, ah, I won the argument because I've been more aggressive and more louder. That's not how you win the debate. And it's not always about winning, it's about learning as well. Mm, yeah, so we yeah. can learn from one another. I can learn from a Muslim, you can learn from me. Mm. I can learn something what you believe. But I like to deal with facts and figures, black and white. Um, but I don't deal with aggression well. If you're going to be aggressive, then, you know, yeah, yeah. Then I don't really want to deal with you. And that's what puts me off about talking to certain Muslims because it's all hatred and aggression that I'm experiencing. I'm not feeling any kind of good good vibes from it, from him. I don't get a good vibe from him. I think he's just aggressive. He needs yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've debated him a few times. Uh, the first time was like a, to, to like, it was street fighting apologetics. It was quite uh, brutal on both yeah. sides. And then after that, he humbled himself a bit, and he and we had a more amicable debate on the resurrection. But uh, in terms of his scholarship, I've been on his Islamic awareness, yeah, and looking at it, and the 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 essay, the articles that are, are there are quite compact. There's quite a lot of information in these articles, but I've noticed some of these articles are often out of date. Uh, so. And the other thing as well is, uh, for example, take uh, you know the origin of the Samaritans. Mm. Be specific. Yeah. The article on the origin of Samaritans. Well, a lot of the article there was actually is actually taken from Wikipedia. Is it? Yeah. Oh dear. And so he's padded it. They've padded it <laughs> as if it's an academic article. <laughs> but all they've done is just took took the snippets mm. from Wikipedia. But they're presenting it as if it's been scholar, as if it's a scholarly presentation. Yeah. You know, and some of the stuff there is out of date. It's not up to date. Yeah. You know, so uh, I'm not, I'm, um, I'm not to. There, there's one or two articles that I've read that were quite scholarly. I don't yeah. know. I can't remember who did them on um, the influence of Syriac on Arabic in the Quran. Yeah. Uh, and that was quite quite in depth. And there was an article I read uh, on the manuscripts of the Quran, which was quite in depth and quite helpful. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen some articles that are out of date, and some articles where it's just padding from Wikipedia, yeah. made to look as if it's scholarly. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is that in all the articles, there's no real critical engagement with scholarship. In other words, they're not actually quoting, and and I've noticed this with a lot of apologies, Muslim apologies. Like when I put a video up, I will actually link sometimes to a Muslim site, yeah, and Muslim literature, yeah. But you find that the Muslim scholars won't do that mm. very often. No, they won't. Like and on Islamic awareness, they're not doing that. They're not uh, linking to. Christian apologies, Christian science, so that you can go and research, and that's a sign, that's a bad sign, that it's more like cultish kind of behaviour, yeah. not not real intellectual discussion and debate. When we uh, discuss and debate, we will say, go and study such a Muslim scholar and such a Christian scholar. Uh, we we don't we we we're not we, we don't fear linking to Muslim sources. Yeah. But you as Muslim apologist are dishonest because a lot of you are not referencing uh, Muslim uh, Christian sources. I'll give you an example. Yahya Snow got me to debate this Muslim guy. Mm. I linked to the Muslim scholar. Yeah. I, I linked to that Muslim scholar. I put a link to his YouTube channel. Right? And I've also stated that I've de that I'm debating via Yahya Snow. Yeah. Yahya Snow, the Muslim apologist, he might change it now now that this video's come out, but as until today, 
it's not linked to my channel. Mm. It's not linked to any of my sources, my website. Yeah. You know, but I've linked to their sources. Again, intellectual dishonesty going yeah. on in the highest of Muslim apologetics. And the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can understand it? So this shows the dishonesty. Whatever the, the Bible talks about the human heart and Muslims, you're just displaying what the Bible talks about. You're just affirming the Bible in every way by your behaviour. And the reason you don't engage honestly with us is because you don't have leg to stand on, basically. If mm. the truth be told, you don't. You don't have no foundation at all. It's all, uh, it's all pie in the sky, so to speak. Mm. It's all it is. You're arguing most of the time from ignorance or silence. Or the, the you know, you try and sound clever by trying to pick up arguments mm. which Christians don't really even have a problem with. There's no argument in Christianity about who Jesus is, his divinity, and anything like that. The cross, mm. that's unanimous. So, well, then we've looked at the whole, most of the. Oh, the other guy. What's he called with a tea towel on his head? I can't think of his name. Zachariah. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think he's worth. Probably he's, no, he's, I think I think I think I think it's worth mentioning him on this level and tell me what you think is that. He, I think. I think he. he need, I, even some of the other Muslims have shown concern for his behaviour. These are fellow Muslims. Yeah. And they're even concerned about his his mental state and what he's actually saying about Islam. And they some of the Muslims have said he has no knowledge of Islam. His yeah. knowledge of Islam but is bad. I think we have to be careful because you know to show love. To the guy. Yeah. Uh, As well, yeah. I think, a couple of things. I think he's been exploited, number one. Yeah. Because he's vulnerable. Yeah. And they, when he said he'd left Islam, uh, Christianity for Islam, yeah. they all lionised him. They all got the cameras out. They all filmed it. Yeah. But they've not taken responsibility as a community down there to look after him. No, they haven't. And he needs support and he needs help. Yeah. You know, um, he just took the jihad and that was it. They left yeah, him. Yeah, I don't think we should go into his mental health. Yeah. Okay. Or to be fair to him. Yeah, fair enough. And 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 denigrate him or anything like that. Yeah. We put the onus on the Muslim community down there. They had all the filming. They said, "Look at him. He's one of our great converts." They filmed him, but they're not helping him, and he needs help. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And, and they're letting him down and he needs help, because, uh, you know, he's, he's got a lot of talent, he's very uh, nimble minded, he's, he's got a good memory, he's got a lot of talent and he could be a credit to Islam if he got the help, but he, he needs help from yeah. his community. How it, that specific help yeah. will let him decide what it is and them decide rather than us yeah. score cheap yeah. points yeah, yeah. On, on the guy. Okay. But he needs a lot of help and support, yeah. and the Muslim community have let him down there in Hyde Park. They've just used him, so here he is, he's one of our great converts, but the guy, I've just left him in the cold mm -hmm. and let him do his thing, but he needs support, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Okay. So, we've done the Muslim apologist, so if you could sum up the Muslim <laughs> apologist in Hyde Park in one sentence, what would it be, bro? A big, big joke. <laughs> <laughs> A big, big joke. Uh, I would sum him up as a uh, total 100% deception going on. That's how I, 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 I yeah, describe it. Yeah, it's shoddy as well. It's shoddy workmanship. It's, it's really bad. And it is shoddy. It's very yeah. shoddy. The scholarship down there, it, it, it's, it's horrific. It's terrible. And you're being lied to and you, you're being presented uh fake news fake videos it's a lot of fakery going on and uh if they were to sit down with bob the builder for a, if, if if bob the builder sat down with mohammed hijab or any one of these apologists and sat down for an hour for a coffee at a place and it was filmed properly yeah or if lizzie had a formal academic debate in a university with mohammed hijab or any of these people I'm sure that many of the Christian apologists down there would wipe the floor with them. Yeah. But they're not given a proper chance because there's a lot of heckles and dis disrespect and abuse going on. And there's a lot of deception going on down there. 
So as young people especially, just what we would say, I'm sure you would say it, go and do your own research. Yeah. Check out what we say, go and study what we say, and go and study what they say, but check it out for yourself, and you'll soon find who's telling you the truth. Don't believe what we're saying, just go and check the sources that we give you, and see where we're at, see who's yeah. telling the truth. That's what we would say. Scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. If it's not true, don't believe it. If it is true, believe it. Yeah. Okay. Any th last thoughts, Mike, and then we'll go on to. Uh... Yeah, I would. I'd urge every Muslim to read the Bible, the King James one. Study it, read it, and the Holy Spirit will minister to you. If you want to know who the Holy Spirit is, and you go on about Him so much, Hyde Park, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit will reveal Himself through this Word. 